Hey guys, just a real short video. Today we're going to do a quick test here. One thing I've noticed with a lot of these batteries that I've been testing and reviewing is they always seem to come up just a few amp hours short of their rated capacity. Now it's important to make sure that these tests are being done as accurate as possible and I'm providing correct information. So today we're going to do a little bit of validation on the various ways I've been testing batteries. And I kind of touched on that in the last video with the Roy Pow battery. After I had tested it with the Batrium shunt, I then retested it with the Victron shunt. But what I really want to do is gather a set of numbers side by side to conclusively answer this question. It's something that's been bothering me a little bit and I want to make sure I got it right. Uh, so I'm not sure if this video will be interesting or not, but I'm going to upload it anyway. Alright, so we got quite a lot of wires going on in this setup over here. The battery for this test is going to be my big battery, 170 amp hour power block. The negative is going through the Batrium shunt block, and then the negative is going through the Victron shunt block, and then it's going over here to my iCharger X6. The positive goes directly into the iCharger X6. In addition, I have the balance leads from the iCharger connected directly to the big battery power block. And then on the side over here, I have my battery bank of EVE 280 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. So the idea for this test is I'm going to take all the power from this battery, run it through both shunts and the eye charger, and then regeneratively charge it into this lithium iron phosphate battery bank. So that will give us three separate readings of amount of amp hours consumed. Now I do consider all three of these metering devices to be highly accurate. So hopefully the conclusion from this video will be that all three match perfectly fine. And the reason for the low tests in some of my videos has either been a balancing issue of the batteries or simply batteries not meeting specifications. All right, so I'm gonna turn on my power block. And this power block is fully charged. I did double check that. So we can see the Batrium display is reading 14.44. That matches up with the reading on the power block and is very close to the reading on the Victron display. Next, I'm plugging in the EVE battery bank into the power side of the eye charger. I'm going to select the correct input that I set up for this purpose. So we can see the voltages of each individual cell and we have 14.42 volts there, so it's similar as well. So I'm going to go to lithium iron phosphate, 30 amps, and I have it set for a discharge voltage of two volts per cell. That's because I want this to discharge the entire way down until the BMS of the battery shuts off. I don't want this eye charger to shut off on its own. All right, and there we can see we are discharging at 29.92 amps. The Batrium shows 29.90 amps and the Victron shows 29.7 amps. So we'll just leave this run and when it's near completion we'll come back and take a look at the individual cell level voltages as well. We're nearing the end of our test here. We're at 159 amp hours in the Batrium, 160 amp hours in the Victron, and 160.4 amp hours on the eye charger. All right, so there you go. The BMS of this power block battery has shut down this test. So before our Victron display shut off, we were at 169.9 amp hours. Our iCharger X6 is showing 170.31 amp hours. And our Batrium display is showing 168.92 amp hours. Now none of these values are that far out of the acceptable range. So this Batrium shunt is rated for a 1% tolerance. The Victron shunt is rated for a 0.4% uh, agus accuracy is a more appropriate term. So this test was done at a 0.18 C rate. And I do want to note that while I was talking, the Batrium display did update to 169 amp hours. The data that feeds this display is updated every 60 seconds. So yeah, I really don't think that's a bad test at all. I think this Batrium shunt is off by a little tiny small percentage, but it is well, well within the rated tolerance provided by the manufacturer. I also did not expect this battery to go as low as it did. I was figuring it was gonna shut off at 2.5 volts per cell but it went almost down to what's, I guess the lowest voltage on this display is 2.23 volts. So I think this does conclusively prove that my tests have been accurate thus far, though this one may be off by a half a percent. I'll have to do the math off camera. But anyway, thanks for watching. If you found this interesting, please hit that like button. Any questions, comments, or suggestions, I appreciate hearing those. You can leave those down below. Thank you.